What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the NHL GM Mode Commentary Series with the Seattle Kraken, the new NHL 32nd team. And right here in the Armchair GM Sports Network, your continuing to grow sports network that covers you everything sports related in North America by sports fans, for sports fans. As you can tell, the page is going through a little bit of a change, too. Like I said in the last video, we're updating the, the, the network as it goes. But on the eSports side of it, we're here with an NHL GM mode commentary series. And we chose the Seattle Kraken, the brand new NHL 32nd team. Uh, if you guys missed the first video, go check it out. We did a, a simulator of the entire first year. Um, and we give you a, a club overview and uh, basically what every player is like in the team. And we went through the first year stats. We just barely missed the playoffs by one point, which I don't think is a disappointment at all. 42, 36, and 4 record. Uh, the only downfall to it, I guess you can, if you call it a downfall, is the Canucks, our arch rivals at Canucks. 40, 33, and 9. And then they literally made the playoffs by one point. So that's going to sting in our first year, but that's okay. That's okay. What I did want to see, though, is how our record, our season record, went against the, the Vancouver Canucks, which is our rival. So let me just start back in October and see all the games against the Canucks. So where is the first game that we faced them? Okay, so we won 5-2 in the first meeting, and that was at home. So that's a huge win there. Um, when was the next time we played them? And we won 4-2 in the next meeting, and that was at uh, that was on the road. So that was uh, in Vancouver. So we uh, won both those games, so 2-0 two, two so far. I think we play them four times, I believe. Oh, I guess we only played them twice. So out of the two times we played them, we went 2-0. So I guess we can be happy about that. Um but other than that, we're here to do the year two off season and see if we can get at least to the trade deadline in this video in the year number two as well. Um, so we'll see how far we can get. So um, as I showed you guys in the last video, showed you guys all the stats and everything. Let's kind of take a look at the draft class and see where our pick is projected to be. Um, let's take a look here. So obviously Alex Lafreniere, we're not going to get be able to get him, is the first overall pick, the next franchise player. Uh, there's Quinn Byfield, Tim Stoltz, and all that stuff. Uh, I added uh, Jake An Jake Sanderson, by the way. Uh, he wasn't in the game, so I added him, and I put him on the Seattle uh, WHL team. Um, also, okay, so there we go. So we're actually projected 12, 13, 14, so we have a potential of winning the lottery. I'm not going <laughs> to hold my breath on that. I don't think we're going to win it, but... Let's just say we, we, we end up where we're going to be ending up, which is either with the 12th, 13th, or 14th overall pick. We have some strong players here that we could potentially get. Marco Rossi is a fantastic player uh, just from knowing in real life and then uh, in this game. Jamie Drysdale could be another defenseman we build for the future. You know, we take two top defensemen in, uh, in the first two drafts, and then we build our team around their defense. So that's another thing we could do. Uh, Dawson Mercer's available, Antonio Stranges. We got a, I think this is a, a generated guy, Willie Metropolit, another defensive defenseman. And he could be another guy we look at as well. Um, or could probably potentially trade down if there was someone down here we could look at. Uh, not really anyone jumping off the page. Maybe this guy, Noel Gundler. No. Any of these guys. I don't think I don't think we should trade down. I think we just pick whoever we get up there. Oh, there's a goalie here. Tyson Hunwick. I mean, he's, he's for sure going to probably be an elite, either a high starter or a medium elite. So we'll keep an eye on him. Let me just pin him to the board. Might take a goalie. And look, that's right near our other pick here. So we could trade up with that that second round pick to at least maybe 38, 39, just to be sure. Or we can take this other goalie, Tucker Tynan, who's actually on the, the Ice Dogs, which is hilarious. Um, I think he ends up being a medium starter, so he, he actually does progress pretty well. So we could even take Tucker Tynan. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye. You know, we'll put a pin on him as well. But as for our pick, um, definitely going to be a, a top 20 pick, which is great. 
Um, hopefully we get uh, moved up maybe a little bit. If not, I'm fine with between 10 and 15. So uh, we'll see what happens when the draft lottery does happen. So that's that. Don't think we need to do anything else. Um, maybe I see the final progression report and see who's grown. So let's sort by modifications. All right. So Sammy Blaze went up by 12 modification points. So that's pretty good. So he's growing. Same with Daniel Sprong and Andreas Janssen. No one else, but that's all right. In the system, let's take a look for back of Carlson the most. 24. This guy's for sure making the team next year. Uh, same with Max Jones. Uh, our draft pick from last year has grown too. He's going to be a 70 overall, looks like. So he'll be uh, rocking in the AHL next year. Uh, Michael Dalcole up to a 77. Same with the Kyle Olsen. Um, or the net. No one else got. It. This is this. This is a little bit upsetting. I mean, I'd, I'd hope Colby Hickey would get some sort of modification points for being our medium elite, like basically franchise player, second overall pick. But uh, he's defensive defenseman, so maybe that's something that's. That's causing him to grow slower. I'm not really sure, but uh, all right. So those are the progress reports. So um, I know the AHL team, our Tacoma Sockeyes, are in the playoffs. I don't think there's anyone I could send down for the playoff run. It's on a two-way. Sprung on a two-way? No, one-way. Timoshov on a two-way. Okay, so we can send down Dimitro Timoshov. I think we'll just keep him up. Yeah, you know what? We'll just keep them up. We'll just see how our AHL squad does really quickly here. Let me just switch over. All right. So it's advanced day. All right. Season's complete. AHL season's complete. All right. So let's go into calendar. Okay. Let's see how our team does here. Uh, so I think the first round's a best of five. So let's just sim through the first three games and see. So they won 6 0, 2 1 OT win, and 4 2. So they swept the. Uh, I think they're called the. I don't even remember what their first. The, the first. The city name, but the Devils AHL squad. Uh, let's sim ahead here and see where we end up facing in the second round. Oh, God. The first round's taking a while. Like four days off here. God, I hope the boys aren't. Uh, they're too rusty for the next one. Okay, so we play the Toronto Marlies. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so let's sim ahead four games and see what happens after four. So we win, we lose, we win. A big win, and two big wins in a row there. So up 3-1 against the Marlies. Sim ahead, we might be able to beat them four games to one, and we do in overtime. So in dramatic fashion, Tacoma slips by the second round. I, I think they're going to go all the way, guys. I built it pretty strong. AHL squad, so I don't foresee them uh, losing unless it's an upset fashion. So let's just sim ahead here to the next round. All right, so we play the Hershey Bears in the conference finals. So that's a huge game here. So let's see what happens here. We lose the first game, lose the second game, win this. Oh, God, we're down 3 1 after four. So this is it. This is where the upset I was just talking about could come in here. Let's sim ahead to this game, and we lose. So we lose 4-1 in the conference finals. That's all right. They had a decent playoff run, 8-5, and five. and now we can sim ahead to the draft. And it looks like in the NHL, Winnipeg is facing Edmonton in the Western Conference, and they're up 3 nothing. And the East Florida is facing the Washington Capitals. That is hilarious. So let's just sim ahead here to the draft. They'll sim all the way up and see who wins the Stanley Cup and the AHL Calder Cup. So let's take a look here. Oh, my God. So our Tacoma Sockeyes lost to the Calder Cup champions. And then the Florida Panthers ended up winning the Stanley Cup. Wow. That is crazy. That is nuts. Okay. So let's just stop the simulation right there. Let's take a look at it and see how that came about. We have to take a look at that playoff tree. So, 4-1. They beat the Leafs four games to one in the first round. They beat Boston four games to two. Man, Florida, we got to go take a look at that team. And then they won in game seven in the conference finals. And then they won in game seven in the Stanley Cup finals. What a playoff run for the Florida Panthers. That is insane. Um, wow. That's all I could say. That's crazy.
And look at that. Kali Yarnkirk went up to an 83 overall, so he's doing pretty good. Let's just quickly see the awards. Uh, so Stanley Cup went to the Florida Panthers, obviously. President's Trophy, Pittsburgh Penguins. And then Winnipeg and Florida with the other ones. So the individual awards. Connor McDavid is our Art Ross champion. Uh, Sidney Crosby, the Hart Memorial. Eric Carlson with the James Norris. McDavid with the Lady Bing. Uh, Kale McCarr with the Calder Memorial. Jonathan Huberto with the Conn Smythe. Bobrovsky with the Vesna. William and Jennings, uh, Matt Murray. Uh, Jarmelson won the Bill Masterson. Jack Adams went to the Ottawa generated coach Vickers. Uh, Frank Selke trophy to Patrice Bergeron. Ted Lindsay went to Crosby and McDavid won the Maurice Richard. So not bad individual stats. We didn't win anything. Didn't think we were going to win any individual award. That's all right. Um, but yeah, I want to take a look at that. Uh, we'll have to see later because I don't think I can I, like view their contract situation. I kind of just want to see what their forward core is all about here. How do they make it to the Stanley Cup final and win? Did they acquire anybody? So no, it doesn't look like they acquired one. Sammy Vatnin, maybe. I don't remember if Eric Holla was on the team before, but no one jumping off the page here. That's interesting. Wow, okay. So just a a random simulation of the Florida Panthers winning the Stanley Cup. That is that is crazy. So yeah, let's just sim to the draft here, guys. So it's gonna show us, I believe, one screen or two screens, and then we're gonna get the draft lottery results. So let's see where the Seattle Kraken end up in the draft lottery. And here we go. 13. Okay, so we stayed at 13. We didn't move. I'm, I'm happy that I said that before that I wouldn't mind if we just didn't move. So we stopped at 13. Uh, Los Angeles won the draft lottery, moving from 2 to 1. New Jersey moved up from 9 to 2, man. They somehow always seem to move up. Oh, my God. They have back-to-back -back picks. <laughs> they have 2 and 3. Oh, man. New Jersey is going to be filthy in the next couple of years. My lord. Detroit, that sucks, moving from 4 to 1. So they miss out on Lafreniere. So Lafreniere is actually going to Los Angeles, which is it's good for Los Angeles because they're a rebuilding team. I'd love Lafreniere to go to a rebuilding team. So he's going to L.A., Hollywood. Hollywood Lafreniere, man. Insane. But New Jersey, man, that sucks for them. They uh, moved up from 8 and 9 and got 2 and 3. I mean, that's not really bad, but they're going to get two solid players on their franchise. But it uh, looks like uh, Rangers have two picks as well. They traded with Carolina. Uh, Ottawa moved down from 5th to 7th. And yeah, that's about it. So we ended up with number 13. And I'm fine with that. So let's just go see what we're projected to take at number 13. So we're projected to take Dawson Mercer. So Drysdale is going to go ahead maybe unless someone reaches. Um, Dawson Mercer seems like he's got pretty good stats here. Uh, he's got 36 goals and 41 assists in his in his year in the is at the QMJHL. So I think we should probably take him. He was on Team Canada, the World Juniors. He only takes two years to get into the NHL. He's similar style as Theo Fleury. Uh, I mean, he would be a solid pick if we took him. Uh, same with Antonio Strangers. I believe he's also uh, got good stats. Uh, or we can re reach down and grab Willie Metropolit, and we grab another defenseman for building this team i don't think i want to draft the center there's no good centers in and around where we're picking um yeah you know what we're gonna i think we're gonna take dawson mercer i think that's a, a solid pickup if, we, if he's available at our pick so let's just move on with that i don't think we had anyone retire on our team i don't think we had really anyone really that old maybe in our our ahl squad so let's just uh, sort by team. Seattle Kraken. Okay, so we had a couple, a couple of AHL guys. So Stafford, Molson, and teaming in uh, retired. Uh, did any of the goalies retire? Nope. Okay. So what's this? Coach retirements. Okay. Uh, did we have any? Oh, we so we had one coach retire, so we'll have to replace him. And McElhinney, Tepe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, draft class interviews. So these are important, guys. These are actually, if you're in franchise mode, I highly suggest to do them. You get three interviews. If you are got three interviews and you go over to where your pick is and you got a guy like, uh, say, Stranges, right? His, his scouting of his potential and type are very low and you want to know what it's really about, you, you interview them and you can ask those types of questions. So I'll take Antonio Stranges as an example here. So I'll pick him, interview player. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go over to play style. 
You click readiness to find out what his readiness, and in the bottom right, you'll see, okay, so he's taking two years to get into the NHL. What's his play style? He is a sniper. And then this one, this next one, you can just pick randomly. So you can either go by character, with personality, or by skills. I usually do skills and do weakness or strength, one of these. I'm gonna, I want to know what his strengths are, so I'll pick strength. And it won't be in the bottom right, but you can read right here. has to be my shot. So his shooting stats are his best stat. So obviously with a sniper, that is a very good thing. You don't want him saying, like, my skating is my best stat, but I'm a sniper. That means his shooting stats are really low. So this guy we could even grab instead of Dawson Mercer, and he could be our sniper of the future. He's only going to be taking two years to develop, and he'll be NHL ready. So you see his potential didn't go anywhere, but we see for sure he is a sniper. So let's do a guy like Wallner because we don't know anything about him. He wasn't scouted. Let's just see what he's all about. So Willie Wallander. <laughs> what a name. Uh, let's take a look here. Readiness. What's he at? Four years. So this guy is a project. He is a two-way defender. And you know what? I want to see what his weaknesses are. I want to see what he's all about there. Let's see what he says. Uh, okay, so I think it's his senses are his weakness, which is a defenseman is not the greatest. You kind of want someone with or his puck skills. You kind of want someone that can move the puck, especially for a two-way guy. So maybe William Wallander is not uh, someone we look at here. And then we have one more interview. Let's take a look here. Is someone maybe we want to for sure know? Who's this guy? Tumo Curvin. Nah. Um, is there anyone down here, maybe? Oh, the goalie. Well, we already really know. What's this guy about? Hmm. Was there anyone up here? in and around our pick that we could probably interview. No, we kind of know what all these types are about. Dawson Mercer, you know, let's just do Dawson Mercer, who was the original intended pick. Let's just see what he's all about. All right, so play style. Let's do readiness. How ready is he? Two years, so just like Antonio Strange's, he is a sniper, so both basically the same type of player. And let's see skills. Let's do, uh, let's see what his weakness is as a sniper. So his physicality, so his, that's not a problem at all. That's like that's something that's not, you don't even need to see that. If his weakness is his physicality as a sniper, then that that's fine. He's not going out there hitting guys. He's a sniper. He's going to go out there and score your goals. So Dawson Mercer might be the guy we take, guys, instead of Antonio Stranges. So I'm really leaning on him. So we'll see where we, uh, who's available at the time of our pick. So there's our three interviews. Hit OK. We should be at the draft now. All right, so... I don't think we have to do anything. Let's just kind of take a look. I don't think we have to trade anybody. I mean, everyone's coming off a contract, I believe. No, not really. Let's just sort by uh, contracts. Okay, let's see here. So we're keep Ocpozo. I don't think we're going to trade just yet. We're keeping Michael Backlund, Spurgeon, Dehan. Maybe a guy we look at moving eventually to free up a D spot, uh, especially for a guy coming up. Maybe we move from Dehan. Actually, you know, we might have to move on from Dehan in this draft. Uh, because I believe uh, Colby Hickey's probably going to grow, and we're going to need to free up a D spot potentially. Um, but I'll look at D in a second here. Other than that, no one really else. So let's just go over to D, man. Let's see, anyone coming off a contract? No. So we're going to need to move somebody to free up a spot. Because uh, you look at Colby Hickey already in 81. What did I say, guys? So, and who who are the other guys? Where are the other two? They, they, get, yeah, they got sent down, so... But they're coming off their contract, so this actually could work. Okay, so this makes more sense. One, two, three, four, five. So we just need to re-sign one of them and maybe an extra for depth. So we'll get to that when we get to re-sign. But look at that. Even Honka up to an 80. Uh, I think there was another defenseman as well. High check. So he didn't really move, so he might need another year in the AHL. We'll have to see. So let's just... Go into the draft. Yeah, we don't really have to do anything else, guys. So let's go right into the NF NFL. NHL draft. Um, all right. 
but let's just take a look here. Look at that. Back-to-back -back picks from New Jersey. That's solid. Anybody wanting to move? Nashville wants to move out of the first round. That's too close to us. It wouldn't, just wouldn't make any sense. I'm not going to give up anything. We have no nothing to give them, so we're not moving up or down. So let's just uh, sim the first pick. Make sure they, they pick Lafreniere. They do. There you go. High elite Lafreniere. That goes into a franchise. Uh, I've seen it before, so good for the Los Angeles Kings. Let's see what New Jersey takes back-to-back. -back. I really want the computer here, the AI, to pick strategically. Don't pick two of the same positions, and then I'll be all right. So let's see what they get. They get, obviously, Quinn Byfield. Yep. And they got a centerman. And then they pick probably Tim Schultz. Yeah. So two centers. So <laughs> I don't understand this. Like, why wouldn't you, like, at least maybe trade away that third that third pick if you're going to pick the same position I don't understand that. Two centers, like, whatever. It is EA. Can't really say much. Let's send to the next pick. All right, here we go. So Drysdale got taken. Marco Razzi got taken. Uh, no one reached for anybody else. So let's just make our pick. And I think Dawson Mercer will be available, guys. He'll be the first one. Yep. So I think we're going to stick with it. Um, this Metropolitan guy seems like he would be a good pick. Uh, but you know what? Or we need to take a forward this time in the first round. And out of Antonio Stranges and Dawson Mercer, I'm not going to pick this Connor Zeri guy or Foudy. I know what they're about, and we don't really need a centerman right now. Um, so I am think we're going to go with Dawson Mercer as our pick. Welcome to the Seattle Kraken, Mr. Mercer. And there we go. Medium top six potential sniper, 67 overall. That is perfect. Give him a few years to develop, and he'll be on the team for sure. Very good stats right off the bat. Um, he will most likely play another year or a couple of years in the OHL, and then he'll be ready to go on the Kraken. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we have another pick in the first. I think we have two seconds, I believe. And where are our second-round picks? So we got one at 13 and one at 16. So we have a 13 and 16 pick in the second round. So let's just sim. To number 45. All right. A couple of people taken before us. There's a, ooh, a medium elite goalie. Oh, that was that goalie, I believe. I'm using medium elite. So that would have been a solid pick if we were able to get him. Damn. I kind of wish that we may have traded up a little bit. I did talk about that, but uh, that's all right. I think there was another goalie available. So Tucker Tynan. So. This is a project. This is what our scout wants us to take. That is what that uh, star means. I could take Ron. Fra is it Ron Francis's kid? It could take Ryan Francis. <laughs> it would make sense. But uh, I want to draft strategically here. Um, we got this Ozzy Weisblatt and Ronnie Hirovinen. Not really. No. No. Lucas Reichel. Is that Reichel's kid? Anyone? Projecting medium elite, a couple of like non for sure elite guys here. Sort by potential, see if there's any really high elite guys available. No. This guy about is a goalie. Four years. It's already 19 though. Kind of want someone that's younger to develop him. Mm. This guy. Who's this? Marty Gerard? No. Jake Neighbors. What a name. Uh, no. Nah. You know what? Let's just pick that goalie. Let's pick Tucker Tynan. We need a goalie of the future. I know Comrie's there, but uh, if Comrie doesn't work out, we have a backup plan. So, Tucker Tynan, welcome to the Seattle Kraken. And there you go, guys. Medium starter potential. Already a 60 overall. I think he's 18 as well. So, yeah, he'll take some years to develop, and he'll develop quite nicely for us. So there's our one pick there. And then our other pick is not far behind. So let's just sim to it. Wise Black, look, it was a medium top nine. So good thing we didn't take him. So do we take Ryan Francis? <laughs> Ron Francis' kid, I'm almost certain. And and bring him onto the team. It would be something that's <laughs> not definitely strategically done, but uh, funny for the, 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 the GM mode here. Oh, but we have this guy who played in an A-plus league. And he had four assists. That's not bad as a center. Marcus Yakupov. Four years dump cycle. Yeah. This guy's Cam Butler is on the ice dog. Take Cam Butler. Take two ice dogs in a row here. That'd be funny. Um, this guy, Nick 
Nicholas Wong. Who's this guy? Brett Kim. Oh. This guy could be a hidden gem here. What is he at? 74? Okay, so 74. I, maybe we tr we trade up for a pick here. But let's take for sure. You know what? I just want to see Ryan Francis. Let's take him. He might not be a great player, but just because he is a GM son. Ryan Francis, welcome to Seattle. He's a high bottom six. Okay, so he could potentially grow to being a bottom six player, guys. That's not bad at all. I am not unhappy with that high bottom six potential. That is something to take a look. And if we play him with the right guys in the AHL, this guy could grow. Uh, especially, we probably need to grow. 5'8". He is a tiny guy. So, uh, there we go. Ryan Francis taken by the Seattle Kraken. Now, 74 was the next, uh, that one pick. So, let's try to get 70. So, 49... I believe it's somewhere in the beginning of the third round. Does it say what over? I wish it would tell you what overall picks they are right here. But Detroit does, Detroit wants to give up the beginning of their third round pick here. So you know what? Let's try to go for this this third round pick that they want to give away. Let's go to our draft picks. We would give them our third pick. And how about a pick that they want next year? How about the sixth round pick? So our third and a sixth. They're moving down, getting an extra draft pick for next year. Proposed trade? No. Okay. So how about we? Give him a fifth for next year. Rejected. No. Okay. Well, if we're going to give you a fourth, I don't want the next year's fourth. Let's get the year after his fourth. So fourth round pick and a third for this year's third. Trade accepted. Perfect. All right. So we have that pick to take that uh, one player. So let's just sim to our pick. Hopefully he doesn't get taken as number 65. Right, so he should be around here somewhere. I think I see him down here. There he is. Okay, so we're taking guys Brett Kim. This guy actually might be a steal. Hopefully, if not, if he's a bust, then it is what it is. Let's make the pick. Low top six sniper, 62 overall. So it wasn't a bad pick at all. Uh, that has potential to be a mid range guy, or he could slide into the second line depending on how he grows. So Brett Kim, welcome to Seattle, Kraken. So let's just sim to our next one at 109. All right, not really a lot of talent taken around here. Might be almost scraping the bottom of the barrel at this time. Let's just see. We got another couple of other goalies. He wants us to take another goalie. I mean, this guy says four years, Frederick Hounley, and this guy says five years, and he's 17. Uh, I don't know if I want to take another goalie. Kind of want to stock the shells with our other prospects. We got a potentially elite enforcer D. Yeah, no. Not happening. Uh, medium top six here. Marty Gerard. I think I seen him earlier. Mm. You know what? Let's just sort by potential right now. And then kind of take a look at people's stats going down here. Anybody that stands out with really good stats here. Not bad. Yeah, we might be scroll. Oh, this one's not too bad. Hayden Fowler, what is he? A medium top, uh, barely medium top six. This guy's probably going to be a uh, low bottom six forward. Yeah. You know, we might have to take that goalie, guys. There's not a lot of prospects left. Yeah, you know what? Let's just take the goalie it wants us to take. You never know. We could get a gem here. So it'll be actually the question between either Frederick Hodley or... Uh, I thought there was another goalie. Oh, Bednar down here. Jan Bednar. Kind of seems like this guy, Holly's stats are a little bit better, maybe. You know what? Let's take a chance on Frederick Holly. Make pick. Medium French starter. It's not too bad. So I kind of want to see where that, where that other goalie was. I'm curious. So let's just skip ahead a couple of picks here and see what he was to compare him. I think it was Bednar, his last name was. All right. So, oh, he was a medium starter, but 52 overall. Mine with the higher 59. It sucks that it was a medium starter. Should have went with Bednar, but that's all right. So, as for our other picks, there wasn't really, really a lot of prospects left, guys. So, I'm just going to trade them out. Uh, maybe got a pick for next year. Let's see if we can get something uh, for these ones. I don't know if anyone wants them, but let's see. No trades found yet. We're just, we might just auto-draft for the rest. 
Let's just sim. Send to pick 141. Make these quick. Don't have to look at anybody. Take the first guy that looks good. So either this guy playing in A-plus league four years or this guy. You know what? Let's take the, the defenseman Turikov. Alexander Turikov. Welcome to Seattle. Low seventh. Yep. Probably never going to sign him. Let's see here. Sort by potential. And one of these guys, maybe Gregorenko. Who's the best skill, best potential guy so far? God, you're really like scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Whatever, Gregorenko. Alexei Gregorenko, probably nothing. Yeah, medium bottom. 49 overall. Yeah, definitely never signing that guy. And the last pick of the draft. You know what? Just because I am an OHL fan, let's just see if there's any Ice Dog players that are available uh, at this point. I'll take anybody. There's Antropov's kid. Lucas Thiero. Yeah, let's just take him. There we go. <laughs> I'll probably sign him just because he's a nice dog. But let's just send the entire draft. There we go, guys. That is the uh, second draft that we've done here with the Seattle Kraken. Dawson Mercer, Tucker Tynan, maybe Francis is kid and Kim. That is a, a big part of our future there. Maybe even Holly as well. So the the first five picks were actually pretty good in, in this year's draft. So I'm not uh, unhappy with that as well. So let's just get into the re-sign phase here. All right, let's go to contracts. What do we have to reassign? So let's go by centers first. So centers, holy crap, Anthony Sorelli. Wow, up to an 84 overall. I knew he was going to grow, but I didn't think he was going to grow that fast. So uh, it's a big jump for Sorelli. So he for sure will be our line two center, and potentially line one if he grows even more. So let's give him a nice contract. Uh, how much cash space do we have? 27 to work with. I think we have good enough. So, if we go to his 28, which will be six years, that's 5.5, I think we could offer him, or 5.4 for six years. I think that's a pretty good contract. So, see if we can lock him in for five year, or six years at $5.4 million. Big Sad will still be here for the third line, and we need to re-sign. Okay, so this is the question here. We re-signed Sammy Blaze. You know, I think we might have to re-sign both. Yeah, you know what? We're signing re-sign both. Let's give Sammy Blaze a three-year contract. At, uh, is he want 3.15? That's perfect for three years. Good movable contract for back of Carlson for sure. Okay, so he only wants a one year. Let's give him two years at 9.25. This, this could be potentially good. So let's see if that works out. All right. And anybody else? No. We're good there. Left wingers. Dimitro Timishov went up to an 81. All right. So we got some growth out of Timishov. So that's good. Um, Max Jones is probably going to make the team too next year. Del Cole, I'm not sure. He might just stay at 77. Um, so we'll have to see about him. Um, none of these guys are going to need contracts yet. So Matt Ray, just go. We'll replace you. Uh, so Timishaw, any other wingers? And it throws up to an 83. Okay, so he got some growth too. So let's take a look here. So we have Pearson, Janssen, Timishov. Yarn Croc, Kinestroza, Akpozo, Daniel Sprong, who will be an 80. Wow. Okay, so we might have to might have to strategically sign here, guys. I, I want to keep Timishov, so let's just sign him. Uh, three years will make him 26, 27, 28. 28 years old. Let's do 2.5 million for five years. That could be a good contract. There we go. I uh, don't need to sign anybody here. Right wing. Hannah Stroza for sure now. we got to re-sign. So he's already 26. Um, two years to make him 28. Three years. I think three years at 4.6 is a good contract for him, especially if he's going to keep growing. And then Daniel Sprong, we for sure got to get in the team. Let's see. Five years. We make him 28 at 4 million. He's going to be a big part of our future, maybe. So let's go two years. No, three. Let's do three years, three mil. 
three years, three mil for Daniel Sprong. But got Bodker, time to go. Nushushkin, how much does he want? Okay, no, time to go. Nushushkin, sorry, thank you for your service. All these AHL guys, we can just let go and then refill our AHL squad. No, 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 no. Trying to release. Dawson Mercer, not going to sign just yet just because he's in the CHL, guys. If I offer him a contract now, we're going to be paying him to play in the CHL. Kind of want him to develop first until he's ready to go in the AHL. Um, don't need to sign anybody else as well. I think Francis as well. Yeah, so we'll wait on them. We'll just fill our AHL squad again with some uh, depth guys in free agency. So here we go. Our decor, Spurgeon, Nudivara, Hickey for sure, and DeHaan. That'll probably be our top four. With Honka and uh, Hijack went up one overall, so it'll be Hijack and Honka. So Tim Heed, we don't need him anymore. He can be released. Mirko Mueller can, well, you know what? What does he want? One year, one mil? Perfect. You know what? I can live with that. We'll keep him. Joaquin Ryan, we can let go. Kindle, we can let go. Campbell, yep. We can release all these guys. All right, Mantha, he'll be in the AHL as well. Still got some AHL guys to keep. You're inside. Time to go. And this guy, Turakov, I think we took him. He could play in the AHL right away. You know what? Let's just sign him, give him a contract. Why not? Fill out our AHL squad. And goalies, James Reimer, we have him for one more year, except Comrie will probably be the starter. It might actually be time to move on for Reimer. We might have to trade him and then give Comrie... The starting position with a backup, uh, someone playing backup. Um, Gustin or Pokey don't want to stay, so they're, they're free to go. Uh, Dryger, I think, did good for us. Tucker Tiny, we're not giving a contract just yet either. We're going to let him um, develop. As for this guy, U.S. Development Camp, he's 19. He might be able to play in the AHL next year, so let's give him a contract. All right. So let's just sim a day, see what we got. Timoshov renewed, all right. Mirko Mueller did as well. Same with Sammy Blaze, Anthony Sorelli, Henestroza, Sprong, of course, back of Carlson. Okay, okay. All right, so we got pretty much everyone with $12 million in cap to spare. Let's just double check to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Um, no. I don't think we don't need to sign anybody just said they're 18 they're still gonna take some time to develop so don't need to sign anybody so let's just see here what we I don't think we need to go in the free agency and get anyone big if there is big names because we'll have Sorelli Backlund Bukestad and for back Carlson or Sammy Blaze as our center core um, and then we'll maybe get some AHL guys as well just to fill out I'll do that on my own though but as for our winger core we need about uh, was it eight Wingers to fill it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Armia may be a guy we move next year during the year, uh, or we use him as a depth guy. But I think we, we don't need to sign any more wingers as well. I think we're going to go with what we got and continue to build this team. As for defensemen, I don't want to go out and get a big-name defenseman. If there's maybe a good one maybe that would help us, that could replace the Han. So we'd have to look for an offensive defenseman for sure, I believe. Let's just take a look here. Two-way two way defensive. So an offensive defensive to work with Hickey in the top four, that's what we need if we're going to uh, look for someone in free agency. And then uh, no one else. We should be good with that. So that's one position we'll look at. And then goalies... I think we could move on from Reimer. Okay, so Eric Carmi just grew in one day. He went up to an 81 overall. So he's going to grow even more. I think in the offseason, he'll be our starter for sure. Might be able actually to keep Reimer as a backup goalie then. So uh looks like we don't have to go out and get a goalie. So that's it with that. Let's just sim to free agency and see what names are available. I'm not going to be going and gunning for these big name guys. So uh, let's just uh, hold out on that. As I sip my coffee here. All right. So free agent period. We're here. Free agent frenzy. And let's see what the frenzy is all about. Woohoo! All right. So some big names right off the bat. Let's sort by UFAs. And we have some big names in Petrangelo, Taylor Hall. Guys that could literally, uh, like, <laughs> definitely speed up the process of rebuilding this team. But I don't want to do that, guys. I'm not accelerating this rebuild at all. 
Let's go to the defenseman. So we're looking for an offensive defenseman. So we have two right off the bat here, Tori Krug and Sammy Votnin and Kevin Shattenkirk. And I believe Schultz is an offensive defenseman. That's strange. I never thought Justin Schultz was. So we have three right off the bat here that could replace Calvin DeHaan. Uh, definitely the same age, but definitely better overall. We have $12 million in cap. Uh, the person that wants the least amount of money is Justin Schultz. Does he fit in our team at all? So he fits defensive pairing one. Kevin Shattenkirk does not. Sammy Vatten does not. And Tory Krug for sure number two, which is what we need. If Tory Krug might be the one to get, guys, because if Tory Krug can fit into number two, that's where Colby Higgy is going to play, and he'll play alongside Tory Krug, and Krug can definitely help him grow as well. So it might be Tory Krug, except we're probably going to be paying him nine something million dollars for the next five years. So we give him a two year contract at the, almost the same amount. And that's a lot of money. Yikes. But I mean, we'll free up cap with Calvin DeHaan. That's true. Or do we go after a guy like Justin Schultz? Hmm. Obviously, Tory Crews is going to have the better stats. God. Oh, this is tough. This is very tough. I don't think Mike Green is going to do anything. No, we're not getting Mike Green. Oh, man. So Schultz or Krug? This is tough. This is really, really tough. And Schultz wants six years. That's a lot, too. So you know why? It might be Tory Krug. Let's just see something here. Two years. It would probably have to do with like a $9.5 million contract for two years. Or we can do one year, see what he's like. If he fits well with Kobe Hickey, we can sign him to an extension. So I think we, we could do nine. Let's do one year at... You know, at 99, let's give him the Gretzky contract. $9.9 .9 million for one year. Let's try that out. And then now that we've offered that contract, we do need to uh, move on from uh, Calvin DeHaan potentially. So let's just see if we can get uh, Tory Krug on the team. Let's advance a couple of days here. I believe it's at the fifth day the big contracts get signed. All right, so right here. So this is what we know. Will Tory Krug be a member of the Seattle Kraken? He will be. All right. So he's extremely happy to accept our offer of one year, 9.9. .9, and we can see what he's all about on our team. And now we can do the honors of finding a new home for Calvin DeHaan. So let's go to defenseman. All right. So look at that decor. <laughs> Looking pretty, pretty sharp up there. So where is Calvin DeHaan? There he is. Let's select him. Let's find a trade. What could we get for Calvin DeHaan out there? Uh, we have four trade offers. So Carolina is offering us a second and third round pick, which is not bad. Uh, same with the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, wow. So Pittsburgh wants to give us Tristan Jari. Damn. And a third and a fourth. So that's that's something. Wow. But I really want to have faith in it. <laughs> and Eric Comrie. I want to see how that goes. And the Blues offering us a second and third. So, um, you know what? I might go with Carolina. Because I want to send him to an East team or Philly. Because I don't want to send him to the West with St. Louis. So let's go with... You know, let's go with Carolina. Let's send Calvin DeHaan over to the Carolina Hurricanes. Actually, you know what? Philly makes more sense, I think, on the defensive end. They kind of need someone... Uh, they need some depth defensemen to fill out their bottom uh, defensive core. Because I think Carolina's got a plethora of D-men. So I think it makes more sense to Philly to want to acquire Calvin DeHaan. So Calvin DeHaan, thank you for your first year with the Seattle Kraken. We're moving on from you. You're going to join the Philadelphia Flyers in the Eastern Conference. So thank you for the trade. And we got a second and third round pick for him for next year. So already looking like a good next year, guys. So we have a, oh, that was two years from now. That's fine. So uh, in 2022, we're going to have a first two seconds and two thirds. So that's not bad at all. Uh, building for the future, which is uh, always great. So now that we moved on from him, our decor looks pretty solid. Um, I don't think, I think actually we might need to fill out the AHL squad. How many contracts do we need or have signed? 32, we're going to need a lot of people for the AHL. <laughs> um, I believe four, actually Fords was the, the key one. We need a lot of. So let's just sort by potential. And look over here to the right. So we can bring back Nachushkin for one year. So we got this guy. 
It's a debt forward in Simon. Okay, you know what? Let's just take the Simon guy. Oh, he's got a lot of people that want him. You know what? Maybe he won't, might not take us. Um, Stunland. One year, 975. Sure. Oh, okay. So, oh, this is not sorted by. Whoops. That's my bad. Can't go after you wet face here. Uh, here we go. So, 75 overall Dauphine shirt. Sign one year. Iconin shirt. One year. We got some other guys here. Okay, so we got some uh, Hunt. One year. It's a couple of centers. Let's do one more center here. One year. Okay, let's get some wingers. No, no, no. That's got a fourth liner. Need some wingers here. There we go. Luff for sure. One year. This guy. One year. Not even gonna begin to pronounce that first name or that last name. Oh, yeah, six contracts. Let's do another winger. Anybody depth. Let's go. I'm looking for some minor guys here. All right, here we go. So, Moutre, sure. Why not? And let's try to get some defensemen here, too. Uh, we got a minor top four guy here. Sure. Let's go with him. Let's go with a defensive defenseman, Hetherington. Name sounds a lot, very familiar. Jacobs, another. Let's do an offensive defensive. Pouliot. Derek Pouliot, sure. One year, one mil. Jacobs, a defensive defenseman. One year. There we go. So we're at 11, which makes it at 43 contracts. Let's just get a couple more. And this guy. You know, let's do a two way. Right. Uh, just in case that one goalie is not ready, we should get a, a minor goalie, a minor backup. There you go. Zach Fukale, <laughs> minor backup. Why not? There we go. And how many defensemen do I have? Contracts do. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get one more for six. Anyone making less than a million? There we go. Let's do this guy. Gross. <laughs> All right. Don't think, maybe one more four, just in case. Why not? Let's do this guy. Linquist. All right. So there we go. 15 contracts. That should be good. That should bring us up to 47. Let's just advance the day a couple of times here and make sure everyone gets signed. Extremely happy. Yep. 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 All right. No. Do not want to get Nikita Zaitsev for both our second round picks. No, thank you. I think everyone signed. I think. Let's just send one more day. See, okay, everyone did sign. All right, so let's just sim to the next season, see the growth we got. I think I'm going to end the video after that, guys, just to see what our roster looks like. And then the next video we'll do, we'll do a year number three or two. Yeah, year number two sim for the Seattle Kraken with our, our brand new team, our brand new drafted team uh, from this this past draft and the offseason work we did with assigning Tory Krug, which is a huge one in getting rid of Calvin DeHaan for future assets. So let's just send it to the next season. I want to see what the growth we got out of all of our players. I'm excited to see that. Um, it looks pretty good with the potential of growth, especially with a lot of guys who look very, very uh, much like they're going to grow by a lot more than a couple overall, especially because we advanced one day and re-sign, and there was already someone growing in overall, a couple of people growing in overall. So I'm excited to see this. So let's go. Done. Go to a roster move. We're still a rebuilder. That's okay. 
Let's start with center. So any growth. So Sorelli stayed. Blaze went up to an 81. So here we go. Our our <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Bukestad is now uh <laughs> now potentially playing fourth line for us with Forbaka Carlson maybe moving to the wing potentially. Um I don't think we had any more centers. I thought we did. Maybe no, we didn't. So yeah, this is going to be interesting to see with that. Left wingers Pearson 82, Janssen 82, Timishoff stayed in 81, which is fine. Max Jones is a uh, 80 overall. See, Dalco says fourth line, but it's a 79 overall. I think I could play him one more year in the AHL, see if we can get a little bit more growth out of him. So let's bring up Max Jones for sure. Okay. Because he's, he's too good to play in the AHL, so he'll play in the NHL. And then we have Yarn Crook 83, Anastros 83, Sprong 81, Ocpozo 81, and Armia 80. And yeah, so Armia, you know what? He might have to. Does he have one more year left? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> he might be an AHL guy, but it'll help our AHL squad, and it'll give us some room here in the NHL. Let's go to defenseman. Krug, 88. Spurgeon, 87. Udvar, 82. Hickey up to an 82. So there we go. There is our top four right here, guys. And then Honka, 81 with high check at 81 is perfect. Mueller, you will go down to the AHL. Then anyone down here grow. No, so we're good with that. So, all right, so some good growth here for uh, from our uh, our rookies. And look at that, Air Comrie up to an 82. He'll get the starting role. Still, this is a backup, but he is slowly growing. And then uh, Holly, is he going to be on the team? Okay, so Holly can play in the team. So, um, my <laughs> Bukali just might have to be a scratched goalie, but we signed him just in case Holly couldn't go. So. I don't think it is going to make us do edit lines. Okay, let's just quickly just do this before we end the video. Uh, I didn't want this to go too long. So let's just do best lines. All right. So it actually has Michael Backlund, the four line winger. What is this? What is this game doing? Okay, so no. No, no, that's not how it works. So Riley's going to be line two. Blaze is going to be line three. All right. So let's build our team here. So who's scratched? Is it Ocpozo scratched again? <laughs> uh, I don't know why I keep scratching him. All right, so Ocpozo is going to probably play line one. There we go. And who's going to play up to make it a plus three? Yarncroc, potentially. Is there anybody else that makes it a plus five? Pearson makes it a plus three as well. You know what? If Pearson plays up here and just plays... Here and then we mix Sprong with okay, so Hinner Strozen makes that a plus three. So there we go with that. All right, so Sammy Blaze, Andreas Janssen, and Timoshov, maybe or Jones. Okay, Jones. So Janssen, Jones, Timoshov, Sprong. I think Sprong, this is a third liner, though. I don't want to stun his growth. Oh, this kind of sucks. And Timisha, wow, he's a plus three on that first line. Hmm. What if we... No. No. Oh, this kind of sucks. Because Pearson doesn't need to grow anymore. I can stick him in the fourth line. There's only one year left. Max Jones is a third line guy. Power forward. That works out well with Sprung and Blaze. You know what? I might have to keep it like this. We might have to find a new home for Andreas Janssen. Like, I, I can't find any room for him anywhere. He doesn't fit well in the, in the top six with anybody. Um... Doesn't fit on a third line as well. It does with Jones, but Sprong needs to be playing some third line minutes if he's going to continue to grow. So we might have to find a new home for Andreas Janssen. Uh, Pearson's fine on that fourth line. So you know why? It might be Andreas Janssen. So who was it for back of Carlson? Let's see if it works if we put him in here. Okay, it does work as a two way. So I just want to make sure it doesn't, or if it does anything for anybody. No, okay, so. This might be it, guys. This might be our lineup for this 
next year. So yeah, Bukesa we can keep as well for one year. Uh, so there we go. This is probably going to be our lineup, and I think this is a solid lineup. You have Timishov, Backlund, and Okpozo, Hinnestroza, Sorelli, and Yarncrock, and then Jones, Blaze, and Sprung for back of Carlson, Bukestad, and Tanner Pearson on that fourth line. So pretty solid lineup. Uh, as for the defensemen, Spurgeon and Krug, I want to see what Krug looks like with Kiki. So it doesn't really do much, but if we move them both up. All right, so it does do the plus three for Krug and Hickey, and I think that's perfect. Uh, Spurgeon and Nudivara still get the plus one, I don't think. No. No, okay, so that's perfect. So Haycheck and Honga don't get a plus yet, but uh, that's okay. They're still both listed as a top six role, so that's perfect right there. And I think that's good. So not a bad lineup, I don't think, for the Seattle Kraken. Let's just quickly best lines our AHL squad. And Dalco will play line one for sure. Like Charchier. Charchier's always on line one. Uh, but he had a big year last year, so I'm going to keep him there. Uh, any rookies that need to be playing? So Olsen, that was one that we, these two was, are the people we drafted last year. So Hall gets one there. Does he get a plus one still here? Okay, that's fine. Okay, that doesn't make a plus with anybody. No. No. Does Derek Hunt make a plus three anybody? No. No. I'm just kind of trying to see if I can get a plus with anybody or with any kind of line combo. Ah, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so here's a plus three. So that works out. All right. So Dalco can at least get a plus three with Luff and Chartier. We got a plus five with these two. I don't think we have to play anybody, to be honest, in our AHL squad. Let me just see. So any rookies that should be playing? No. No one really should be playing. Tur Turkov maybe, but you know what? I think we're fine with... Uh, See if we get any. Okay, we got a plus one there. Does this do anything? No. No. Okay, so that's fine. At least we get a plus five out of this this defensive line to help the decor or to help the team out. Uh, goalies, Fukale is probably going to get scratched because I want Holly to play. Definitely is a backup. Let's see if we can get anything out of him. And there we go. All right, so that's our AHL and our NHL team, the Seattle Kraken. I think it's a solid top six. I think we can definitely get some growth. Timishaw, this could be a big year for him. If he has a big year, he could potentially grow even farther. You can see his, his puck skills are definitely better than they used to be. So this guy could definitely be a threat uh, for us. And if he grows even more, that's even a plus for us as well. Sorelli is probably going to get some growth too. And that, plus, that second line is a deadly second line. So other than that, guys, that's going to do it for this video. In the next one, we'll get to some year two sim and hopefully make the playoffs and be a competing team. So we'll see what happens. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you for following. Make sure you are hitting that like button. You're subscribing to the channel. Leave me down any comments, anything you want to uh, want me to do in this franchise mode. I'm open to anything. So that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.